Hey, what's going on? If you go to usetooler.com, you'll check out this cool little micro interaction over here. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm calling this a magnetic tooltip. We can see that anytime we hover, we get the, uh, the name of the brand up here and that it kind of follows the mouse cursor as we go. And it also parks itself all the way on the left here on the left. And then here it's in the middle, 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 middle. And when I talk about middle, I mean middle and above and then parks itself on the right. So a little bit of tricky stuff here to get this working. We're gonna use GSAT Flip to get this magnetic tooltip working in Webflow. Hey there, Webbay. In Webflow, I've gone ahead and hooked this up to CMS and it's programmatically going to work for any number of items. So if we come into the CMS here, you'll see I have backed buys. Uh, that is basically going after this backed by number of investors as, and we have the individual apps here. So the name, is checkout, that's that app. I have a color hex here. I'm not using Webflow's color uh, specific field here in the CMS because it doesn't surface itself in the attributes properties, which we'll see in just a moment. Anyway, so we have the color hex and the logo, and that is all we need for each of these. So let me back out of the CMS here and then show you into the setup. The main thing we have with the setup is a follower outer wrapper and then an inner wrapper here I'm calling container. Now in that container, we have our collection list that's right here. Let me go ahead and open up the navigator so that we can see everything. So there's our list. And then we have each item and each item is simply an image. Now the item is where I've tagged the data attributes that we want to access with our code. So if I head over here into the settings, then we'll see if we scroll down, we have both follower name equal to name and follower color equal to hex. And these are grabbing from the CMS. If I click into those, we see that purple color that tells us, hey, these are coming from the CMS. Two other big pieces with this animation are this text here that is same investors as, and actually there's a little bit more of this. It says backed by same investors as, you can see that over here. And this has no specific settings, but we wanna know that this exists because we're gonna need to hide it anytime the mouse is within this list here. And then we have our little follower bit here. So that just has some paddings on the side here. Its position is set with position absolute. And we'll basically just use GSAT flip to animate this left property or the right property we set right to zero and left to auto, we can see now it's all the way on the right. Otherwise, we'll just have to calculate the above position in the middle for the ones in between. So I could set this back to zero and auto, but I'm just going to keep them all at auto here because we'll handle this in our code. We've got some color and we're making sure that there's no wrapping of the lines here because if you didn't set no wrap here, you would see the extra characters drop to the end of the line and then come back up as the container expanded. And that's really all we have to see there. Finally, heading up into the page settings, this is where I'm placing the code. I'm just loading this as a module and I'm running the code locally right now, but when you do get this clonable, I'll have the code down here below this style tag. The other thing is that I set a style on that follower to be opacity zero. And then once everything loads, we'll set the opacity to be one when the user hovers in to that CMS list. All right, so let's hop into the code now. We can see we're starting off by importing the GSAT core library and then following that up with the flip library. And here I'm using Chroma, which is a library that will help us manage our colors. I didn't wanna put in every color that we needed for the CMS. There's different colors for the text and the background. So I'm gonna use Chroma to mix some new colors with code. Then we have our register plugin on GSAP where we're registering the flip plugin. Now we're gonna start by selecting elements on the page that we need. And we wanna get the follower. So we'll use query selector on the item with the class follower underscore follower. And then we'll get the rest of our elements as well. So we need that follower list, we need the items within the follower list and we need the backed by text. So we'll start off by controlling the visibility of the backed by text as well as the magnetic tooltip little follower element. And to do that, we use the mouse enter and mouse leave events. So I'm going to put an event on the follower list for the mouse enter event. And then we're going to supply a function that executes when that event listener is fired. And so what we want to do is we just want to use gsap.2 to set the auto alpha, or in this case, the opacity and the visibility of the back by text to zero. And we want to set the follower auto alpha to one. Next, we'll add our mouse leave event. So when the mouse leaves the follower list, then we will execute the function supplied right here. And that function is just going to be the exact opposite of what we did up here. So we're setting auto alpha to one on our back by text and to zero on our follower element. So let's save and see the behavior that we get in our website now. All right, now we see when I hover over an element, that follower is shown. Um, and when I hover out of the list, the follower goes away and the backed by same investors as text comes up. So hover in, hover out. We see that it's working as far as we want it to. Now let's work on our flip animation to get this magnetic tooltip following our cursor. Now what we wanna do is start by looping over all of our follower items. And those are the ones with the data attributes that have the values that we need inside of them. 
So let's use a for each loop on the follower items. And in that for each loop, we define an anonymous function here, which gets access to the item and the index. Now remember, if anonymous functions don't mean anything to you, then you definitely wanna check out my Patreon course where I go over functions in depth. I have two modules on functions and every module has a unique Webflow project associated with it. So if you're getting started with JavaScript, I think this is the great place to start. Now let's get back to the code though. So inside of our anonymous function here, we're going to start by saying that we want to add an event listener for mouse enter. So not only does the follower list have its own mouse enter and mouse leave event, but each follower item is going to get its own mouse enter as well. Now, the very first thing we want to do with flip is record the current state. And we can do that by calling flip.getState. And we want to do it on the follower. So we're going to say, hey, look at that follower item and tell us what it looks like. And also be sure to register these properties, color and background. By default, get state only works with like CSS transforms and width and height and those things. So if you're animating other properties as two, in this case, we're doing color and background color, then we need to pass this props object. And that gets stored in a state variable, which we're going to use in our animation at the end of this function. Next, we're gonna go ahead and get the text and background colors that we need. So we'll start by setting a variable color equal to the attribute value using the get attribute on follower color. So what this is saying is that this is the follower item that we're currently accessing. So you could easily just say instead of this item like that, but in this code, we're using the this keyword. So we're gonna get the attribute on the item and we're gonna get that follower color. Remember, we looked at that in the Webflow project and that's being stored in this color value. And remember, this is a hex color string that we defined in the CMS. So next we have the background color and here we're gonna use that third party library chroma. We're gonna pass it the color that we saved up here. Then we're gonna desaturate it by 80%. And then we're gonna mix in 70% white. And this is for that nice faded kind of desaturated background color that we have. Next, we wanna update the text that's in the little follower element. And what we're going to do is just set the text content on follower to the get attribute value on our follower name. Again, here we're accessing that CMS value that's stored as an attribute on the item. Next, we'll make sure to actually set the colors that we defined up here. So we're going to use gsap.set pass in our follower item, and then tell it that we want to update the color and the background color using this JavaScript object right here. Now, next we're going to define the meat and potatoes of our logic here. So let's set up a JavaScript conditional here, which are some if else statements. Now, what we want to do is check if the index is equal to zero, or in other words, if we're looking at the very first item, again, that's this item that's in follower items, then we want to run some specific code. This one, we want to park that follower, the magnetic follower, all the way on the left so that the left edge aligns. Then we want to check if the index is actually equal to follower items dot length minus one or the last item, then we want to park it all the way on the right. And finally, if none of those conditions are true, then we'll set what happens on our middle items. So let's see the logic that we do here. So for the first item, we're just going to set the followers left property to zero and the right property to auto. Remember testing this out in Webflow. Next for the last item, we'll set the follower left property to auto and the right property to zero. So that's all the way to the right. And for the middle items, we have to do a little bit of math. So we'll calculate center X, which is equal to this dot offset left plus the offset width divided by two minus the follower width divided by two. So we've stored that in a variable here and now we can call gsap.set and we'll set left to be that center X value and we'll just set right to be auto. Finally, we'll go ahead and animate using GSAT flip. So what we're going to do is we'll say flip.from and pass in our state. Remember, we recorded this all the way up here. And then we made all these DOM manipulations. We changed the color, we changed the background color, we changed left and we changed right. And then we're going to define how we want that animation to behave. So we can set the duration to be 0.3. We can set an ease here and that's all that we need to do to finish this up. So let's save and see our animation. Okay, I'm now hovering into these different items and we can see that we have our following tooltip. It's magnetic following the mouse cursor. We can come out and then we see backed by same investors as, and we can come back in over here in Robinhood and all the way over to Stripe on the right there. And we can just go left and right and just watch how wonderful this little interaction is. Hey, if you like this video, I think you'll like some other videos on my channel. Of course, you can go down to the videos here, but I would direct you to watch the image trail one right here. And what this is all about is getting a trail of images to follow the cursor around. We did some mouse follows here, so let's do some more mouse following with this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.